Describe the point where you realized that you had a potential career in pros. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. I only had one scholarship offer coming out of high school. So not that my confidence was low, but, you know, expectations weren't as high, as, as high as kids that come out of high school and they have maybe 20 scholarship offers. So not until maybe after my junior season, um, which was actually my redshirt junior year, so my fourth year of college, did I realize that there was probably an opportunity. Um, the first couple of years I was up and down, had some good times, had some bad times, went through some injuries, played mediocre football. But then after my junior season, had just a really consistent, good year, our team did really well, I started to get contacted by a lot of agents. And um, you know they were talking to me about the prospects of representing them, and or them representing me going to the NFL. And, and that's when it kind of hit me like a ton of bricks, like wow, you know, I can do this thing. And, um, and then I, I think that's when I really kind of bared down and realized this could be a career for me. So describe that process between college and then the pros, that in-between transitional mm -hmm. period. It's a, it's a really unique process. We're actually at the facility right now where I did my NFL training uh, in Lake Barrington at the uh, Canlan um, Performance Facility. So, um, you know, it, it was one of those things that it was really fun, but there was a lot of nervousness, anxiety, a lot of uneasiness because you didn't know where you were going to go. You didn't know if you were going to get drafted or a free agent or if you were ever going to get picked up by a team. Um, but I just wanted to embrace that moment. And you know, I trained with a few of my close friends uh, here at this facility. And, and uh, my trainer, Kevin Barkle, did a great job of getting us prepared. And then I got drafted and then I went off to Indianapolis. I was born and raised in Indiana, so I was close to home. So my, phase, my transitional phase was a lot smoother. Um, than a lot of other guys probably had. Uh, you made it to the NFL and you stuck around, which is a big deal. What do you see as kind of the biggest differences between yourself and other guys who stick around and guys who make it? Or maybe they're great athletes, but they just don't quite make the cut. That's a good question. I think um, a lot of it just comes down to maturity. I think it comes down to how you handle your finances. Uh, your family, what do you do off the field? You know, are you out partying? Are you out spending money? Are you doing these kind of things? I think guys that really look at this thing as a career and an opportunity to um, capitalize on their platform, you know, speaking engagements, community service, uh, getting involved in other opportunities of business. Um, you know, I, I think those are the guys that really understand, you know, how to utilize the NFL as an opportunity to really kind of, you know, excel themselves in the future because the NFL stands for not for long. Most guys aren't like Adam Vinatieri or Matt Hasselbeck that play for 20 years. You know, the average career goes maybe three, three and a half years for guys that make it. A lot of people don't realize that, you know, there's thousands of guys that never even make it that even have the opportunity to get to three, three and a half years. Um, but, but I think it comes down to maturity, how you handle yourself off the field, um, and, and some of those other aspects that people don't necessarily think of right away. So what are some of the handful of things you can do, especially in the transitions, whether it's high school to college or college to potentially pro at any, any different level, all the different options now, what are some of the handful of things you can do to help that transition, resources you can do? Yeah, well, I, I think um, one thing that comes to mind, and, and you'll see in the, the football throwing videos we did, um, I think it correlates really well. I said, you know, humans are creatures of habit. You know, it's muscle memory, it's what you do. Um, you know, time and time again that becomes habit that you live your life like. And I, I think the same goes for how you live your life. You know, you, you gotta create good habits, whether that's, you know, doing the right things, you know, behind closed doors, uh, not breaking the law, maybe going to church or having a family or, you know, being a good person. You know, I, I live by the, the motto, you know, what goes around comes around. And, um, you know, you, you, you need to create good habits of how you live your life and you can carry that through every single level, and especially from you know, high school to college. I think time management is one of the biggest things because now all of a sudden you have a lot, of, uh, a lot more freedom you know, when it comes to social life. Uh, you're gonna have more subjects in school that you're gonna have to take care of. You're gonna have more hours that you're gonna spend training football or, or whatever sport you play in the film room, all those kind of things. Time management's huge. And then when you get to the NFL, it's being mature and, and understanding that you're now a grown up. You're not in college anymore. Now you actually have you know responsibility, car payment, mortgage, rent, whatever that may be. Um, so a lot of it comes down to just how you live your life. And if you do it with uh, as a, a man or woman of integrity and character and honesty and transparency, hard work and perseverance, some of those key values that my parents have raised me on, 
that uh, I know a lot of other parents out there do that, that I feel have really helped me you know, develop into the man I am today, those are what carry you through. Sure.